This effect sees a double revelation of a thought of number and a selected card that seems utterly inexplicable. This is Coach Trick. Today's effect is an absolute gem that will have your audience convinced that their luck is off the charts. Self-working, shuffled deck, no setup, this has it all. As ever, stick with us to the end as we reflect on how learning magic can unlock new heights on your journey to success. Okay, let's jump into it. Grab a deck and let's go. Okay, as ever, let's kickstart by taking a look at the effect itself. Now, this is going to be a demonstration of the power of a lucky number, specifically the spectator's lucky number, even though they might not even realize it. And here's what happens. We're going to start with a shuffled deck, so you can just hand the cards to the spectator. They can shuffle those as much as they like. Once that's done, you're just going to take the deck and you're just going to spread them face up on the table to show that they really are mixed and they can see that just there. And then you can gather the deck back up like so. You're now going to ask the spectator to think of a random number. Now you want quite a small number for this, so say between four and 10, but it really is a free choice. It's totally up to them. Now, you're going to turn away so you can't see anything that's going on. You're going to ask the spectator to take the deck and to deal a row of cards to the table corresponding to the number they're thinking of. So let's say in this instance they're thinking of the number five. They'll deal five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now obviously ask them to do that quietly so that you can't hear anything. You'll now ask the spectator to take a look at the last card that they dealt and to remember this as their selected card. Not to mention it, but just remember it. So we can see here, it's the two of hearts and then to place that back onto the table. Now, in order to mix up the cards, you're going to ask the spectator to deal the rest of the cards from the deck onto the cards on the table. Dealing the top card onto the first pile, the second card onto the second pile and so forth until they've dealt all of the cards. So the spectator will just deal like this, dealing the cards to the table. With that done and the piles tidied up, you're now going to ask the spectator to gather up the piles. Starting with the pile at the end that contains their card, taking this pile and placing it on top of the previous pile, and then repeating this for the remaining piles until the deck is complete. Now, to make sure the selected card is well and truly lost, you can now ask them to give the deck one complete cut, just like so. At this point, you can turn back around. Now you can remind everybody that we started with a shuffled deck. The spectator chose a totally random number and they used that number to select a totally random card which was then lost in the deck. There's absolutely no way that you can know the chosen number, the selected card or where that card now is. It is well and truly lost. However, you're now going to attempt to find it. You're going to take the deck and you're just going to ask the spectator to think of their card just to picture it as clearly as they can in their mind and you're just going to look through the cards and try to sense it no i don't think it's down here no i'm not sensing it here i don't think it's in those but i am picking something up down here this is interesting i'm sensing something with this card this card, just here. You can explain to the spectator that although you're sensing something with this card, you're not sensing it's the selected card. There's something else going on. In fact, you think this card might represent their chosen number. Remember, up until now, they haven't even mentioned their number. For the first time, ask the spectator to name their randomly chosen number. Of course, in this instance, it was the number five. And now you can reveal that this card right here is indeed a number five. You can explain to the spectator that five just happens to be their lucky number. They might not even be aware of that, but it's true. Not only have they used it to select a card, it's so lucky for them that they can now use it to actually find their selected card. All they need to do is spell it out, literally lucky five. 
Ask the spectator to take the deck and just to spell out lucky five, dealing one card for each letter to the table. L U C K Y F I V E, placing the last card aside just here. For the first time now, you can ask the spectator to reveal the value of their selected card. Of course, in this instance, it was the two of hearts. You can remind everybody that that card was selected entirely at random and it was lost in the deck. However, thanks to the power of the spectator's lucky five, this card right here just happens to be the spectator's selected card, the two of hearts. Okay, so let's take a look at the secret to this effect. And the secret here essentially depends on the use of key cards. Now you really do start with a shuffled deck and that's what adds to the impact. Now you're just gonna spread the cards face up to show that they're really mixed. Now, during this process, you're secretly just going to note the top two cards as your key cards. So the top card here is the King of Diamonds, and the second card here is the Jack of Clubs. And you're just going to remember these two cards, the King of Diamonds, the top card, the Jack of Clubs, the second card, and then you can gather the deck back up. Now you're going to ask the spectator to think of a number in between four and 10, and it really is a free choice. And then you're going to ask them to deal a row of cards corresponding to that number to the table. So let's say in this instance they think of the number six, they'll deal six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. They then look at and remember the last card that they dealt just here. So in this case, we can see it's the queen of hearts and then place that back down in the same position. They'll now deal with the rest of the cards from the deck onto the cards on the table, beginning at the start point up here. So top card on the first card, second card on the second, third on the third, and so on, until they've dealt all of the cards. With that done, now ask them to take the last pile, which contains their card, to place that on top of the previous pile, and then to repeat that, to work their way back to the first pile, so that the deck is back together, just like so. You can now ask them to give the deck one complete cut. The selected card is now well and truly lost. However, here's how you're going to find it. You're going to take the deck and you're just going to look through the cards until you find your second key card. So remember, this was the card that was second from the top of the deck that you remembered. So in this instance, the Jack of Clubs. So you're just going to look for that card. There it is, just there, the Jack of Clubs. Now what you're going to do is to count the number of cards that are in between the Jack of Clubs and your top key card. So this is the top card of the deck, the King of Diamonds. So I'm going to start counting from the seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's the King of Diamonds. So there are eight cards in between the two key cards. Now to find the selected card, I'm just going to count the same number again from the card after the top key card. So starting from the nine here, and once again, I'm just going to count eight cards, the same number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as you get to your number, that will be the selected card. And we can see here the Queen of Hearts. What you're also going to do here is to work out the spectator's chosen number. And you're going to do that with the number of cards you've counted between your key cards. So remember in this instance, I counted eight cards. Now here's how this works. If you count 10 cards, the spectator's number is five. If you count eight cards, the spectator's number is six. If you count seven cards, the spectator's number is seven. If you count six cards, the spectator's number is eight. And if you count five cards, the spectator's number is nine. Now, don't worry if you don't get that straight away. It's actually quite easy to remember and I'll place it on screen to help. But once again, if you count 10 cards, they've chosen the number five. If you count eight cards, the number is six. If you count seven cards, the number is seven. If you count six cards, the number is eight. 
and if you count five cards, the number is nine. In this instance, I counted eight cards, so therefore I know the spectator's chosen number is six. So at this point, I now know the spectator's selected card, the Queen of Hearts, and I know their chosen number, six. I'm now going to spell out lucky six, starting from their selected card towards the top of the deck, one card for each letter. So starting with their card, lucky six. So L on their card, U, C, K, Y, S, I, X. And you're doing all of this in the act of trying to sense a card. With lucky six or whatever number they chose now spelled out, you're going to take this pack here and cut it to the top of the deck. You're simply now just going to look through the rest of the deck and remove any six or a card corresponding to whatever number they've chosen. In this case, I'll remove a six just like so. All that's left to do now is to use your presentation to reveal that this card is their selected number, six, and if they spell out lucky six from the top of the deck, then this card will be their selected card, the Queen of Hearts. With a little bit of practice, you'll be out there performing this one in no time, but above all else, have fun. As we wrap up, remember, that just like in this trick where their lucky number leads to an amazing outcome, trusting in your instincts can take you to incredible and unexpected results. Magic like life is often about following your instincts and trusting the process. So keep pushing your limits and remember, believing in your own magic is the first step to making the impossible possible. Thanks for joining me today. Until next time, keep on believing and take care.